Jellica here from aprettyfix.com and today, by popular request, I'm back with another weaving tutorial. Today it is all about Raya loops. You know, I love adding subtle texture to my wall weavings and I find that Raya loops really does the trick. It provides a lot of warmth, liveliness, and just a lot of interest in my wall weaving. So if you love adding subtle texture to your wall weavings, or you just want to learn a new weaving technique, then you're going to love today's tutorial. Okay, on to the good stuff. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to create Raya loops for your wall weavings. And this technique can be applied to any shape, any design. Um, you can create Raya loops that go across the entire warp. Um, in this case, I'm creating a shape. I'm creating a circle that I'll be filling in. If you're going to be creating shapes that are anything other than um, horizontal rows, then I would recommend that you mark it out using something like a water-soluble marker. I use this one by Clover. I'll leave a link in the description box for those of you who are interested. Um, but you can use a pen, you can use a marker. Um, as long as you know that the work won't show through after you're done, you should be fine. But I always like to use something like a water soluble marker, um, just in case some of the warp string strings that are marked do show through. All I do is take a damp cloth and wipe it down. Okay. So um, in order to create your Raya loops, um, you'll just grab your yarn. In this case, I am doubling up. I'm using two yarns, and, um, but you can use one, three. You can just create you know, um, whatever kind of design you're looking for, um, but I just kind of like the look of these two. I think it'll create an interesting texture. So for each uh, Raya loop knot, you're going to be using two warp strings. Um, this is probably the easiest way to do it, and this is what is um, going to, what I'm going to use for my final design. Um, so for me, because I'm creating a circle, I'm going to be following the line. So I'm going to be going across, and when I meet the mark, I will then go in the other direction. So I'll just be going back and forth horizontally to create um, the circle. And I just eyeball it. I don't really count warp strings very much. Sometimes I do, but in this case, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And as soon as I reach that blue mark, I'm good to go. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, probably, I don't know, over here somewhere. I'll grab these two, and we're gonna create a starter knot first, okay? So um, what I've done is I've actually grabbed a whole bunch of yarn, just bunched it up here, and this, these are the two end pieces and um, we're gonna do our starter knot. So you're gonna grab two, you're gonna put the yarn over top of two warp strings, okay? And then you're gonna be going underneath the first warp string, like that, and then on the other end, you're gonna be going underneath the second warp string, and you're just gonna be taking all of that yarn, and then you're gonna pull it all the way down, and that creates your starter knot. Now this end piece I don't really want sitting out here, so I'm just gonna tuck that in behind a, the warp, okay? So that really kind of helps secure it, and that's the start. Now, to create your first um, Raya loop, again, you're gonna be working two at a time. So first you're gonna take the first one, and you're gonna take your yarn and go underneath that string, that warp string, and this is gonna be your first loop. So you pull on that, and then I'm just gonna leave like little loops. These are gonna be small little loops. Okay, so you can kind of see that first loop that's been created. And then I'm gonna take the same yarn, and I'm gonna be creating like a C shape. If that's a, that might be a good way to look at it, going arcing in this direction and I'm gonna be taking that second string. So you can see the first one where the loop's been created, and then here's the second one. I'm going over top of it like this, and I'm gonna pull it out, go underneath, and pull it through the center, okay? And then hanging onto this loop, I'm gonna pull down. And then there's the second knot, right next to the first knot, and there's my first loop. 
So you can see I'm working two warp strings at a time, and this is where the knots are created and the loops are created between. Okay, so that's how we're gonna kind of make our way across. So again, here are the next two warp strings that I'm working with. I'm gonna be taking the first one, pull it out a little bit. I'm gonna be taking this yarn that I'm working with, just wanted, wanted you to see where it is here. Um, and I'm gonna be feeding it underneath, pulling it, and this is gonna be that loop that I'm creating. And you can decide how big you want the loop, if you want large loops, and you kind of want to create a cool textured weave, go for it. Um, I, I, I love big floppy loops. I think they look great. In this case, I'm making kind of tighter loops. So there's going to be a textured look, um, but they won't be too, too floppy. So you can kind of control, you know, how, how big you want the loop to be just by pulling at this. So in this case, I kind of want it to match closely to this other loop. So you can see the first loop, the second loop. Then I'm gonna be creating that C shape again, okay, going in that direction. And then I'll take the second warp string, right, of that, uh, the one right next to it. And then I'm gonna take my yarn that I've got all bunched up at the end and I'll go underneath in this direction and hanging on to that little loop at the bottom, just so it doesn't come undone, I'll pull and I'll create the third knot. And you can see here's my first loop, here's the second loop, okay? And then here's the third knot. And then you just keep going in that same direction. So that's basically how you would do that. Now I'm just looking at it right now because I'm trying to create that circle. I think I've reached the edge, although I could maybe go another one over. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, I think I'll go one more over. So I'll take my yarn, create that next loop. It doesn't have to be exact. Sometimes it's nice to see it you know, a little bit off. Um, go to the next warp string, making that C shape again. Remember, we're making the C shape. You're gonna go underneath, through the middle of the C shape, pull down, hanging on to the first loop, and then there's the next knot. And the knots are great because it keeps it, you know, in place. And I really, I really like weavings that are just well, well done, well made, and everything is nice and, and tight on the on the actual uh, loom or on the warp. So once you, I've created or you, you've created your row, then what's really important to consider when you're using this kind of technique is you always have to eventually go back to creating basic tabby or plain weave. Um, so underneath um, these loops, I've got plain weave going. And plain weave is, is a really important um, technique to use to keep the weaving together. I've, I've discovered early on that really you have to figure out ways to continue to use the plain weave to keep it all together. So once you've created one row of your loops, which are pretty secure, but if I were to create a, an entire um, section of loops, it would actually loosen my weave when I took it off the loom. So then what you do next is just create a row of plain weave. So I'll just basically feed this up and down. And so for those of you who are not as familiar with um, plain weave, that's really the, you know, the, the basis of all weavings is the plain weave where you go up and down every other warp string. So these are the warp strings. So you really should do um, one row of plain weave um, 
once you've created one row of your rye loops. And this will create a more um, kind of sturdy look. And then I usually take a fork to kind of bat it down. Um, I haven't gotten too fancy yet with my um, all of my weaving uh, tools, but I think it really works for me. So here, I'm gonna be doing the same thing. Now here, I ended uh, my row um, just a little off here. So the, our first pair of warp strings were right here. This is where we created our first knot. You can start here if you want to. It really doesn't make a huge difference once you've created a row of your plain weave. But in this case, because I'm kind of moving, uh, moving this shape out, I'll end up a little further out. So this is the pair of warp strings that I'm going to be using now. Uh, principle is exactly the same though. So I'll go underneath to create my loop and kind of keep it nice and small, nice and tight. And then I'll go to the second one. In this case, I'll be creating a C shape. You'll pull that warp string, you'll go underneath and through the middle of that C, hanging onto that loop that you created, and then you'll tighten the knot, and that's what keeps that in place. And then, you know, you just kind of make your way across um, using the same technique. Often wonder when you get to the end of your yarn bunch um, you know how you handle that um, so for this we're just going to create one more loop and knot so here's the loop and then we're going to create a knot gonna pull that down and then I don't really have enough really I mean I could create maybe another row of tabby but I'll just show you when I've got this gotten to the end piece um, just tuck it in behind and it doesn't really matter where you tuck it in I'm not going to tuck it in here because then it's just going to fall through to the bottom but I'm going to tuck it in where it'll sort of stay above up top where there's something to kind of hold it in place so I'm going to tuck it in here like that and um, you know once you create more loops and more rows of, of plain weave then really nobody's going to notice that and at the back when you're done the project you can just weave this into the back of the piece and then it'll just disappear um, you won't notice it at all so that's basically what you do you just kind of tuck it in just the same way that we did when we started the project for the first knot we tuck the piece back and we'll just weave it in at the end. Um, and we do the same when we run out of our yarn. So here's some more yarn, here's another bunch of yarn, and then we just start again. In this case, we're gonna be going across to create some more um, rows of plain weave. So let's see, I'll start um, with the yarn at the back and then I'll weave um, over and under, so every other warp string. So I'll go under every second warp string to create my plain or tabby row of weaving. I think 
I might, let's see, maybe another one. And because this is the end piece, I'm going to be really careful not to pull it out all the way. I'll take my fork and bat that down. Okay. So again, I'm just eyeballing it. I see that there's the mark that I left and that's where I think I'll move on to next. Now at this point, I've gotten about one third of the way in, in creating my Raya loops. And I've also gone ahead and done some plain or tabby weave across the sides here. And the reason I've done that is because at uh, various points along the way, I'm actually going to weave a plain weave all the way across. Um, probably I'm going to do one, two, maybe even three. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to prevent this very large portion of the Raya loops from kind of spreading outwards once it's off the, lo the loom. When it's on the loom, it can be really deceptive. It looks like it's you know going to stay exactly where it is, but because you don't have your tabby weave or your plain weave to kind of secure it all the way across, this big mass of Raya loops will actually sort of end up spreading out because there's nothing really holding it together. And I'll just show you, I actually did something similar. This is a, um, a Raya uh, Knots tutorial that I actually shared on my blog. And uh, the one difference between uh, the Raya knots and the Raya loops is that there are no loops. It's just kind of like a shag along the front. And so I'll show you what it looks like on the back. So along the middle, I actually did plain weave all the way across from edge to edge. You can see the white going all the way across. And that's what actually holds it together. If I didn't do that, then this actually would kind of bulge out in the center because they're just such a mass of those uh, Raya knots there. And I actually shared my experience of not doing that on uh, a similar weave on that same blog post. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description box just to show you what happens or what needs to happen to prevent that. Um, and that's just a picture tutorial, but this one I'm actually gonna show you what I do. So I did a plain weave up to here and then I'm just gonna take it all the way across from edge to edge. just like this, going all the way across. And then I'm actually using my um, Susan Bates five inch uh, needle. And this is great because um, a lot of uh, weaving needles are about three inches long and they're great, but uh, you don't get across the, the warp as quickly as you could with a um, a longer needle so um, this one really comes in handy and I'll leave a link in the description box so you know where you can find one of your own it's really inexpensive I think I might have paid oh I don't know maybe five dollars for it I, I don't know um, you'll have to check the link when I do link up but um, yeah it was really inexpensive and of course as always I create arcs as well and that just prevents the weaving from being pulled in. Um, if you end up doing a tabby weave or a plain weave where it just goes all the way across and you pull it tight, you end up having an hourglass and you don't want to do that. So you, you create arcs along the way to kind of create a looser, um, a looser um, uh, weave across and then you just use your fork to um, push it all down. Okay, and then from here, I'm just gonna continue doing some more uh, Raya loops, and then uh, I'll, um, I'll then do another planar tabby weave across, maybe one or two places just to kind of give it added um, strength. And this isn't gonna show through. Once I start creating uh, more loops, it's just gonna like disappear into the background.
So now that I'm done, I've got this lasso piece that I just tuck in behind and I'll weave it into the back. And then I just finish this off by creating more rows of tabby or plain weave as it's also known and make my way all the way up. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, come and visit me at prettyfix.com or follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Until next time, bye for now.